Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and I'm going to talk to you about one of the most basic computer science abstract data types, the list. Before we actually start, let's talk about what we mean by an abstract data type. When we say an abstract data type, we mean something that's conceptual. Um, you do implement abstract data types, but if you understand the concept of the list, then the implementation, especially with something like the list, is not tremendously difficult. So first let's look at something that most of the students will be familiar with and that's the array. And the reason sometimes people have a hard time with the concept of the list is because they've got their head wrapped around this concept of the array. Well you should understand what an array is. I mean it's, it's essentially a bin, a box with a bunch of little pieces in there that you can stick stuff in. It's indexed, typically integer indexed, even though that's not a requirement of an array. It can be indexed by other things that you simply put data and it's normally strongly typed and that you would put the same thing in every bin but that isn't even a requirement of an array itself. Um, some of the exercises that you might have done like the insertion of an element into the array um, kind of give you an idea of how the array operates because if you insert an element let's say here in element 2 well everything is going to have to slide over one you have to push them over and that does kind of help you with conceptually the difference between an array and a list. So let's look at the list itself. The list itself is an abstract data type and at its basic core it's a simply a node with a pointer to another node. Okay, This is a good, uh, you know, good conceptualization of a list with a head and a tail and nodes uh, with pointers to other nodes but if we get down to the core of it this is what you need for a list in its most basic form. And I've actually def uh, done this uh, some, a little bit of coding in JavaScript where I've defined this concept of a node and the node simply has one thing in it, next, which will be a pointer to, in a list, another node, which again has a pointer to next, which is a pointer to the other, another node. And an instantiation of a node would simply be like you see here, var node equals new node. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now with this one little concept, you can do a whole lot of stuff. So first is, you know, if you have a list, what do you do? Well, essentially, if you want to add a new node uh, onto the list itself, you just say you take the existing node and say node not next equals new node, or you just make the node and then say node not next is equal to the node that you made. Okay. Now this concept of the node is simple in that the head is the first element of the node and the tail, which would be the last element of the node, is defined by the fact that it points to nothing or it points to null. So any node in a list that points to null would be the tail. Now that doesn't have in itself, that might not have a tremendous amount of usefulness. So to add a little bit of usefulness to the node itself, you need to have the ability to store things in the nodes. The nodes do have a lot of capability because you can, um, and, I'm, and again, I'm using JavaScript, which um, has one great capability in that, let's say we, we make our list have the pointer to the next node, which is next, and then it has the ability to put some data into it. And you can add other things to it. You could add a name and some data. Well, in JavaScript, this data Okay, anything in JavaScript is an object, so this data could actually be a function, or it could be another object, or it could be a collection of objects, or it could be another list, or it could be an array. All those things can be stored inside the data of the node. And so you have this ability to link these things together and store stuff inside of them and be able to go progress from one to the other. As you progress through um, a course in data structures especially, you're going to see some of the incredible usefulness because this is the basis of most of computing. The concept of the stack, the concept of the queue are all built upon the concept of a list. So um, some of the things that you might want to look at, and I'm not going to cover every single aspect of the list. I actually do go through implementations of a list um, in, another, in another lecture that can take you through some of the things that you can do with it, but we're going to stay with the concept here. So one of the things that you might want to do with the list is find the last element of the list, finding the tail. So that simply is just defining a function in, you know, in, code, in the node itself, such as is tail, which simply looks through, hey, is this the next one? If this, is this node the next one? And if it's not, it just moves on. You know, if it's not, 
it asks, hey, is the next one the tail? Okay, simple, simple implementation stuff. So what are some of the things that now, looking at this as an abstract data type, understand that there are many ways to implement a list. So things like singly linked lists, which I've demonstrated here, only have pointers going forwards, but it could just as well have a pointer going the opposite direction. In reality, that doesn't even make any difference whatsoever. You're simply pointing the arrows to the left or pointing the arrows to the right. Uh, Doubly linked lists have another level of usefulness where you've got pointers pointing bo both bo forwards and backwards. And many times when you're implementing a list, you may want to actually wrapper the list inside of another object, which is essentially a list manager. So the list itself is accessible through a single object, not at implemented through all the different collection of nodes. However, um, the head node can be considered a wrapper for most of the things that you might want to do with the list because if you operate on the on the, the head node and the head node has the knowledge of where the next node is, it can simply pass on whatever it is you're trying to do to the next node and see if it's the node you're looking for. Some of the things that you will be doing um, and working with in computer science and in IT is stacks and queues. Those are covered a little later, but they are simple, basic, abstract data types built upon the concept of a list. So the last thing I'm going to show you in here is, okay, and we're just going to do a simple conceptual operation. Uh, when you did an operation on an array where you had to insert something into the array, you noted that you had to move all the elements over to do the insertion. Okay, if you were thinking, oh, I don't have to move them over and I can just put it in one of the bins, well, that's not an insert, that's a replace and replacing and inserting are two different things. In the concept of a list, an insertion simply means that you take the pointer that was pointing to one node, point it to another node, and then make that node point back to the original node that was the one that the first one was pointing to. Or very, you know, I said a lot there, but if you look at the diagram, it's relatively straightforward. So if you, this should help you be able to conceptualize what we mean by a list. And if you can get this concept of the abstract data type down, all of this specific abstract data type, as we move forward and look at many other abstract data types, things will become much simpler as you go. Thank you very much, and that's all you have. Hopefully good programming for all.